This is going to be one of the most insane ultra lightweight hunting rifle builds you're ever going to see. Gavin, you're here from ultimatereloader.com. I am really excited about this ultra lightweight hunting rifle build. This is going to be an ultra lightweight 22 GT. That's right. I heard about 22 GT and I thought that sounds like a really great kind of balance between 22 Creedmoor and some of the lighter cartridges like 224 Valkyrie. I already did a bolt gun in 224 Valkyrie. Totally love it. This is going to give me a 308 case rim, a little bit more velocity. And in this configuration here, I'm going to have the ultimate backpacking varminting rifle. That's right. Everything from coyotes on down. I probably wouldn't hesitate to take deer with this either. This is going to be totally insane. So what I want to start with before I get going is all the stuff here that we're going to use. Now, this is just on the heels of my 223 trainer build. You're going to want to check out that video. That was my first rifle build with the Precision Matthews TL1660 lathe. This is a beast. It's big. It's rigid. It produces great surface finish. It has some really, really great features. I'm using the Truebore alignment system. This allows me to do axial and radial adjustments to get the bore running perfectly true so that when I'm threading the muzzle or when I'm chambering, I'm dead on. For this build, I've enhanced that a little bit. I built an outboard spider and I also have a barrel extension that's going to enable me to support the barrel better and to use compressed air to blow chips out while chambering, that kind of thing. So this is just going to kind of take things to that next level with my workflow. And if I get results like I did with the 223 trainer, I'm going to be completely happy. We got some really, really cool gear here to talk about. So this is going to be based on the Bat Bumblebee action. It's their aluminum short action. It's got steel insert for the receiver threads. Very, very lightweight. I've got a bolt here that's configured for 223 bolt face. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to use the modular bolt system from BAT to convert that to a 308 bolt face. I've got a benchmark carbon barrel. This is their new patented technology. They've got a special way of doing things that promises more shot to shot consistency, less creep due to heat and other issues. It is also incredibly beautiful, I will note. <laughs> We've got the XLR Element 4.0 magnesium chassis. You've seen this on the channel. I just did the exclusive Bergara MG Lite launch video. That's a very similar configuration. That one has the folder. This one is even a little bit lighter. It's got the carbon buttstock, the carbon grip, the magnesium chassis, full length Arca rail. It's got M-lock and it's got an integrated bubble level. What more could you want for an ultra lightweight modular hunting rifle? I can add weights to this to change the characteristics. On the muzzle end, this is really, really cool. I wish you could, I wish you could like hold this in your hand. This is from Salmon River Solutions. This is their titanium brake for hunting. It's one of the smaller, shorter profiles. It's just over an ounce. Like, whoa, seriously? Yes, seriously. <laughs> this rifle is going to be just ridiculously light. I'm also trying for the first time a Trigger Tech Remington 700 Diamond Two Stage Trigger. This will be perfect for hunting. I can get just the right trigger pull, but I've got that two-stage action, which I think is going to be a great dynamic for a hunting environment. Alpha Munitions, a couple things from Alpha Munitions. I've got a carbide reamer. This is a prototype with some geometry that's optimized for manual lathes. That will be pretty cool. It's a piloted reamer, so I can use my bushings to get just the right fit. I've got a Dave Manson 6GT go gauge. That's right. Gauges like headspace and case gauges. Got the Wilson case gauge here, interchange with 6GT because the shoulder and the base to datum are the same. Basically, it's the neck that's going to be the big difference there, and that's not a part of those particular gauges. Oh, forgot to mention, for the element, I've also got a length of pull adjustment here. I've got a bag rider, so that's going to help me configure things just how I want it to be. Pretty excited about the Alpha Munitions 22 GT brass. Okay, this is factory brass. It's got their new optimized case head technology, the OCD. I'll say the most accurate ammunition I've loaded ever was brand new six dasher 
Alpha Munitions brass. So I have very high expectations uh, and I'm, I'm glad to be using super, super top quality premium components here. So that gives you an idea of kind of the core things. I'm still actually working out my reloading die situation. So more on that in a little bit. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about the bolt head swap for the Bat Bumblebee action. So we're gonna remove the bolt from the action. This is the one that came with it. This has got a 223 bolt face, which I'm likely to use for another build. So I'm very glad that I have it. We've got the bolt disassembly tool here. We're gonna put this little pin into the hole in the cocking piece, tighten the knurled nut, and that's gonna allow us to very easily rotate the entire firing pin assembly. Okay, now we've got this tool. This is the sleeve removal tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this in. You hear that little click? That means that uh, those little jaws have located themselves behind the sleeve. Okay, we're gonna tighten that, pull it out. That makes that super easy. Okay, now the bolt is just gonna come apart. Make sure that we have everything aligned properly. You can see here, we've got the other bolt, the front portion there. This has got the 308 bolt face. Okay, make sure that we're aligned here. You can just drop the sleeve in now. Push the firing pin in. I'm gonna rotate this until the cocking piece is basically right at the detent. Give it a little wobble. Make sure that it's on that detent. Look at that. We are ready to roll with a 308 bolt face. Well, the build is done and I've actually already shot the rifle. I'm gonna tell you the complete story from swapping the bolt head, which we already did, all the way up to breaking in the barrel. Okay, so after swapping the bolt head, the next thing that I took on was checking and double checking and triple checking my measurements. So every bat action comes with a tenon print, which is a pretty familiar thing. Uh, compared to the 223 trainer we just built on the bat TR action, this is actually a little bit simpler in terms of the machining. There is no counter bore. So the things that you're looking at are things like the tenon diameter, the tenon length, you're looking at what threading you're gonna use. And what I did was I took a depth measurement with a depth micrometer to see what the front of the receiver, in other words, the end of where the recoil lug is, it's integral in this case, down to the front face of the locking lugs. And that gives me what is my total clearance needed for the tenon, what's the corresponding tenon length. I adjusted that by a few thousandths of an inch, wrote that down on the piece of paper, and now I'm good to go on kind of what all my dimensions need to be. I'm ready to go over to the lathe. But before we do that, <laughs> we need to do a couple extra prep work items uh, that I documented during my last build, that 223 training build. So to review, I'm using the Precision Matthews TL1660. This is a very large, heavy duty lathe that's very rigid. It's all Taiwanese. It's also available in a 16 by 40, which I think would be a great gunsmithing size. I got the larger lathe because I wanted to have larger uh, capacity between centers. And last time I ran into an issue where I had trouble blowing out <laughs> the chambering oil. And so I wanted to take that on by creating this barrel extension. So uh, my Precision Matthews PM 1440 GT has a 16 inch spindle. This has more like a 26 inch effective length spindle. Then you add the true bore alignment system on. This is this truck system that allows you for radial and axial alignments. So you can get your barrel and your corresponding critical internal portion of the bore perfectly aligned. Well, that does add um, probably six inches or so to the truck length. So the effective overall spindle length is, is pretty long on this lathe. And so what I decided to do this time is to adopt a workflow that uh, I was told about by Benchmark Barrels, which is to start with the muzzle threading and then to use this. This is a 300 Remington Ultra Mag factory takeoff barrel that I hacked in half and I, I drilled and tapped on this side and I did a nice job facing it, 5.8 24. I had already threaded the muzzle, which you saw in that story, and then I milled a couple wrench flats on. And so 
in addition to that, we've got the outboard spider that I built. The lathe does not come with a spider, and that's the other function of this barrel extension. This allows me to blow compressed air through it all the way through the bore to clear out the chamber when I'm checking, when I'm taking successive passes and want to get the chips out there. I could also hook up a pressure flush system. This would allow a continuous high pressure flow of oil and then you just basically take little plunges with the reamer. When you withdraw it, all the chips are flushed out. It's called a pressure flush system. Okay, so that's one part of it, but then the other part is with this barrel extension screwed on, we can now hold on to the end, which prevents the entire uh, barrel assembly from kind of flopping around or vibrating while the lathe is running. So for this, I had essentially a solid cylindrical billet of aluminum around the shop and I basically faced it on one side, I bored it out, I started by drilling and then took a large boring bar and made successive passes and then I turned this side down where I've got a tenon that's threaded, this, this threading is uh, M68 by 1.5 millimeters and this is where this lathe is really really handy, I was able to just shift levers and turn these threads. Uh, you don't have to do any change gears or anything like that like you would on a lot of other lathes to go between inch and metric. Um, and so this screws into the inside of the spindle. I gave up a little bit of spindle capacity, basically the thickness of this on both sides overall. Uh, still plenty big, it's still over two inches and that gives me plenty of, of room to work with uh, barrels, barreled actions, you know, that kind of thing. So this turned out really nice. I really like the way that it works. Uh, to install on a lathe, you screw it in, take out a couple of these screws, put a screwdriver through it, just torque it on. Worked absolutely awesome. While we're talking about the extra tooling that I put together for this build, I also machined two sleeves. These are split sleeves. They've, I milled this a split on here. Turned the outside, turned the inside so that I could slip one end uh, near the muzzle here to cover up the carbon fiber. You don't want the jaws of your chuck to scratch or dent the carbon. And because these benchmark barrel blanks come so nicely finished, just like what you see here, I did no finishing after the job, I decided to make another sleeve for the breech end work so that the six jaw chuck can clamp onto this Delrin plastic and not onto the shank of the barrel and or the carbon. So this is now a system that I'm going to use when turning barrels like this and it worked very well. Okay, so I went on to the muzzle work. I put my sleeve on, I clamped it down in the six jaw chuck that's a part of the true bore alignment system. I used my SSG range rod, it uses two bushings that ride inside the bore, it gives you a nice cylindrical rod so that you can work your indicator get your axial and your radial adjustments dialed in with a true bore alignment system and proceeded to thread this 5 8 24 with pretty much my standard setup. I like to recess the crown a little bit for protection and got the thread pitch just perfect and the diameter just perfect and checked all that, good to go there. So at this point, we're ready to flip the barrel around. I open up the chuck jaws, I withdrew the barrel, screwed on my barrel extension and proceeded to carefully guide the entire barrel and barrel extension through the spindle of the lathe, put on my sleeve, and then clamped it with the chuck jaws. I like to go around, there's, there's three different uh, screws on the chuck and incrementally tighten them. Uh, basically, this split sleeve can account for any irregularities on the shank of the barrel and then proceed to dial things in much like what I did on the muzzle end. Uh, but there's a little bit of a different uh, process for the breech end. I parted off the end of the barrel just a, a little bit, about a half inch total. I did a pre-drill. I dialed in the bore with the combination of the SSG range rod and then double checking with a tenth indicator on the grooves inside the bore right in that critical throat transition section. I'm always paying very careful, close attention to that particular sec section. Once the barrel was completely dialed in, then I can bore that pre-drill true. The pre-drill removes the bulk of the chamber material from the barrel blank. This is an important step. Otherwise, you'd have a lot of extra plunges, a lot of extra wear and tear 
on your reamer, plus this gives the reamer a perfect surface to start engaging on. And you want to check that for reamer chatter between successive plunges, probably about every 300 thousandths total of depth and of course at the very beginning to make sure that things are off to a good start. So what was nice here was uh, I've got the barrel completely supported. You know, before I started up the lathe and actually started any of the cutting, I brought these spider screws in on the barrel extension, just as if it's a barrel sticking out, uh, just with a very small amount of pressure just to stabilize everything. So the tenon was then turned to diameter and faced. Uh, there was a thread relief cut on the inboard side so that between successive threading passes you have a place to stop and then withdraw the tool, backtrack, go back with the cross slide to your datum zero and then take another pass. This is an inch and a 16 by 18 threads per inch and worked my way up, started to thread the action onto the tenon, had a couple threads of engagement, went a few, few more thousands off the diameter and so on and so forth until I had just the right fit. I like to screw the action onto the barrel and have just a very, very slight rattle. Very, very slight. You don't want galling with your threads between the receiver and the tenon and you want for things to be able to settle in and locate with just a very small extra bit of tolerance there. Very good fit and at this point we're ready to take on the actual chambering. And for the chambering here again I'm using this Alpha Munitions 22 GT solid carbide reamer. This is the first solid carbide reamer that I've used so it was interesting to compare and contrast it with the high speed steel reamers. A little bit more pressure on, on the infeed for, for the reamer, but it cut really, really good. A really nice finish on the chamber walls, and I had zero chatter during the entire process, which is you know definitely a really critical part of, of the whole thing. So when I got close, I screwed on the action. I had my Manson go gauge in the bolt and checked my gap between the front of the receiver and the shoulder of the barrel. I like to get up to about 20 thousandths or so and start to take those measurements to see exactly where I need to go. With successive reamer plunges, I was able to get down to the last couple thousandths of an inch. Here I'm using the Gordy Gritters tape trick yet again. That's to put scotch tape on the back of the go gauge that lengthens it two thousandths of an inch. So we'll cut the chamber a couple thousandths deep We'll take a, uh, about a thousandth and a half off when we get the crush effect by tightening the receiver onto the barrel. Everything kind of collapses just a little bit and we typically end up with about a half of a thousandth beyond the go gauge, which is perfection. So I very carefully worked my way up, double checked, and at that point the chambering was complete. I broke the edge to the entrance with a chamfer, I like to give it about 15 to 20 thousandths on each side at a 45 degree angle and use some sandpaper to scuff the inside of the chamber. Okay, now I'm using my tablet and my Teslong NTG100P bore scope. I've got this great setup that was inspired by Gordy Gritters where I have a quick change tool holder with the NTG100P mounted. That's their pistol bore scope. Perfect length on the lathe to get in there in the chamber and see what's going on. And as you can see in the footage here, I ran it in right to that throat transition and things were running perfectly true. And this is where I'm really impressed by this Alpha Munitions reamer is if you look at those edges where the throat ends, very crisp, very clean cut on those throat transition edges. And that just gives me an indication as to how well this reamer is cutting. At this point, chambering job is done. Then came the moment where we screw on the receiver, torque it down, and check our headspace. If you recall, I had two thousandths of scotch tape on the back of the go gauge. I leave that on and I do my no-go check first. So I tighten everything down in the barrel vise. This has got a 1.2 inch shank, which is pretty common. Put some powdered resin in, torqued it down. There's an internal uh, action wrench tool that you can get from Bat Machine that I used. It goes on the inside, I set my torque wrench to 100 foot-pounds, torqued it down. 
Now I loosen the screws on the barrel vise and spin the receiver around so that it's pretty much upright. I like to leave it in in case I needed to retorque it to take it off or do any extra work there. I put the go gauge, which is really a no-go gauge at this point, back in the bolt, checked, handle did not drop. Took the scotch tape off the back, put it back in, handle did drop. That means I have just the right headspace, held to a tolerance much tighter than what most gunsmiths do. Typical go and no-go gauges vary by four thousandths of an inch between the two, the, the no-go gauge being the longer of the two. So I like to hold a tighter tolerance. Great to see my headspace landing exactly where I wanted. The next thing to do was to take it down to the new Ultimate Reloader store. I've mentioned this, we've got a, 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 an FFL location here where we're going to start building rifles. And I put this on the bed of the 50 watt fiber laser engraving machine. This thing is just awesome. It does such a good job of engraving the details and the branding on the barrel. So I've got Ultimate Reloader, I've got 22 GT, one and eight twist, all right there on the barrel shank, and it looks super professional. So with the barrel to action complete, there's still a few things we need to take care of before we can shoot the rifle. First thing I did was turn the barrel to action upside down and drop the Trigger Tech Remington 700 Diamond II stage into the pocket. The Bumblebee action comes with the pins that mount the trigger to the action. Really like that detail. They fit perfectly and slid in smoothly. I didn't even need a punch, which was really nice. At this point, I backed off the trigger pull weight setting until it was approximately where I thought it needed to be. That to be checked later. Then I looked in the safe. I found this Athlon Midas Tac 5 to 25 by 56 scope. We use this on a lot of the rifles, as you've seen on the channel lately. I found a pair of XLR medium height rings on the shelf. I put all that together. Very careful about getting everything perfectly level. I've also got a Lone Star bubble level on here for the long range shooting. Working our way to the muzzle end, we've got the Salmon River Solutions two port titanium brake. This thing at the, about one and a half ounces is hardly weighs a thing. The perfect brake for this build. And what I like is it's got this shoulder nut. And so what that allows you to do is get it up against the, the shoulder of your threaded muzzle with a little bit more tightening left to go angle-wise on your wrench flats. That's how I located this. I had a bubble level on my Picatinny rail. I had a bubble level on the wrench flat here on the top for the brake. And it's just a matter of, of working this nut into the right location and tightening it and then checking against the Picatinny rail. When the levels both agree, you're good to go. This was pre-bored for 22 caliber bullets. I love the look of it, I love the weight of it, and it's also very compact. With these specialty cartridges, the question is always, where do I start? I can't go to the Hodgson website and just look up load data for 22 GT. I could if it was 6 GT, but this is essentially still a wildcat. Enter Jim Cowber from Alpha Munitions. He's written an article, he built a rifle very similar to this and did some of the trailblazing uh, with some of the load development. So he actually sent me his Excel spreadsheet and I had some data to start with. And I thought, why not start with Burger 80.5 grain full bore bullets? It's right there in the sweet spot of the weight range. H4350 looked like it was gonna work good. I had a little bit of a freak out moment about seating dies. I thought to myself, I don't have a 22 GT seating die. But then I remembered I had the Short Action Customs, the seating die, which is universal for 308 case roomed cartridges which 22 GT is. <laughs> yes, okay, so I've screwed it into the Area 4190 press. I did some priming on the Competition Primer Seeder from Primal Rights, love that tool. Uh, fired up my a and FX 120i scale and charged the primed cases. Do not use this load data, this is for information pur informational purposes only. So what I was using was the 80.5 Burger Bullet, brand new, Alpha Munitions OCD 22 GT brass. We've got 37.0 grains of H4350, which was a little bit below, just barely below what Jim uh, sorted out for a good load for his rifle and 2.448 inches cartridge overall length. I thought really my goal for the break-in is just to get some data points here. Um, I didn't have the chronograph with me, so I'm gonna chronograph these separately down here 
in front of the shop to just get kind of a, a baseline. So I know with no load data and going with a completely arbitrary load, I'm not going to get quite as good of results as I will after the load development. But I proceeded to seat all of those bullets. I labeled my box and we headed up to the mid-mountain range. Now we can't actually drive up there right now, even in the side-by-side -side, because of the extreme snow that we got. So my cameraman, Tyler, and myself, we hiked up there, got our target set up, and I went through my standard break-in procedure, which is one shot clean, one shot clean, one shot clean. Do that a couple times, and then three shots clean, three shots clean, three shots clean, and then five shots clean, five shots clean. And so this, this is the actual target here. The first shot went completely off the paper. I was using my Bushnell bore cider. I don't know what I did, but it was off. So I lined up the, the bore on the bench rest. I'm using a Sinclair competition front bench rest and a protector model leather bag, very stable setup. So it's very easy to align the, the bore looking down at with the target. Uh, elevation was way off. So I dialed that, I dialed my windage just a little bit. And then shots two, three, and four went into this nice little group. And I'm cleaning between these shots. That was 0.475 inches. Five, six, and seven went to, into 0 0.480 inches. I'm getting the hang at this point of this Trigger Tech Diamond two stage. It definitely works a little bit differently and I think I got the second stage turned a little bit too far down because it wasn't very distinct. For hunting rifle, I'm going to just turn that up a little bit so that after I get that first take up, I can feel the second stage just a little bit better. Of course, on the bench rest, this is a little bit more forgiving. Shots 8, 9, and 10 went into this really nice, very round 0.333 inch group. I was very happy. Uh, to see that. So at this point I jumped to five shot groups, uh, the first of which went into this nice round group, 0.523 inches. That's probably exactly half MOA. Uh, you have to divide by 1.047. That was shots 11 through 15. And then shots 16 through 20 went into a 0.574 inch group. Again, this is my first experience with Benchmark's new patented carbon barrel technology. And I'll say for the number of shots fired here, it's probably the best result I've seen in, in terms of not having any kind of stringing of any sort. Um, this is, I mean, if you look at this, at, at the, the shape of these groups, nice round groups, no tendency that I can see here to have vertical or horizontal stringing. And I know that this is just an arbitrary load. You know, when I'm doing load development, I'll see groups open up and shrink. So with some load development with this rifle, I think we're going to get some results. Uh, probably probably five shot groups in this third MOA range, which is really spectacular for an ultralight hunting rifle. You know, uh, the trigger worked well. Again, I'm going to, you know, make some adjustments there. But uh, overall for an ultralight hunting rifle, with no load development, I could not be happier. We have covered a lot in this video, but I have more planned. So what's next? Well, first I'm gonna get complete weights for the rifle. I don't have a functioning scale right now. You're probably wondering, what does this thing weigh? So am I waiting on that replacement scale from Cambridge Environmental, so I'm gonna follow up with that. Also, load development. Let's talk different powders, different primers, different bullets, different seating depths. I'm gonna be doing some work there to squeeze as much accuracy as we can out of this platform. When the rock chucks come out, when I get a chance to coyote hunt, I'm certainly gonna put this to the task on, on those hunting applications. I think that's gonna be a ton of fun. Also, one final note, we are opening up our rifle building services to the public shortly. Could be a matter of months, not totally sure. Uh, the components are taking a, a while to get and that kind of thing. If you're interested in getting on the wait list, you can go to ultimatereloader.com slash rifles. Tell us what you're interested in and we'll add you to that list. Thank you for watching. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, 
please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.